What's up and welcome to a very special kind of funny games cast. Of course, I am Tim Geddes. I am joined by Imran, the Don Khan. Hello. Uh, and I am very, very pleased to have some special guests today. We have Hinano Akiyama, Hamaguchi-san's interpreter. <laughs> and we also have Naoki Hamaguchi, the director of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. He also worked on Final Fantasy XII, 13, 13, 2, Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy 13, and was a co-director of Final Fantasy 7. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> before we get into the interview and before we get into the questions, I just, I, real quick, I want to, to say thank you. Thank you, everyone sitting here, and thank you, everybody listening. I feel like this is a, a very big privilege for me to be able to, to sit here and, and, and talk to him about Final Fantasy VII, a game that is so important to me in my childhood and uh, to where I'm as an adult. So many of my friendships were formed talking about the original Final Fantasy VII. So many of my adult friendships mm -hmm. and uh, close bonds have been uh, made talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake and now Rebirth. So video games are so cool and I just really want to appreciate how special it is to have such an amazing creative, somebody that is so passionate about this franchise. And uh, I just, first off, just want to say thank you for allowing all of this stuff yeah. to happen. Yeah. Same for me. Like at my wedding, I came down to Final Fantasy VII main theme because like that that's a mu that's music that mattered to me in my life. So thank you. I think I'm Yeah, welcome. <laughs> あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
あの私にとってっていうところで言うとあのやっぱりファイ今まで私もう20年以上「こうファイナルファンタジー」のフランチャイズの開発をやってきてるんですけど、まあ、どのタイトルもこうある意味こう新規のこうタイトルとしてこ,うこれまで作ってきてたんですけど、まあ、本当にこう過去にあった作品をこ,うここまでの規模でしっかり作り込んでリメイクするっていう機会はこうやっぱりなくてでそれをまあさらにまあ2作3作としてこれからあのまだ作っていかないといけないっていう。こと自体はやっぱこうすごくこう初めてのこう体験だったので、まあ、そういう意味ではあの非常にあの特別なタイトルになっているというのはあります。So for me personally,、um, you know, having uh, developed uh, games, Final Fantasy games at Square Enix for over 20 years now,、um, all of the titles sort of I worked on previously were more so,、um, you know, sort of standalone and very new titles on its own. And this is the first time for me where, you know, I've been able to kind of develop and, and sort of reconstruct、uh, this title that's been beloved and, you know, coming from the past.、Um, and, Uh, and, and further on to now create something for the sort of second title and third title moving forward.、Um, so, in that way, it's very special and you know, it's been a really new、uh, challenge experience for me. What were your first thoughts when you heard that like, the product's going forward, that like, they're finally going to remake Final Fantasy VII? So, this is the first time I've been in the past. えー、リメイクがあのかあそうですねリメイクを作るといったようなお話が上がったときにどのようなあの感じでしたか。そうですねあの一番最初このファイナルファンタジーセブンリメイクプロジェクトが立ち上がったときはあの私はまだこう参加してなくてあのまあ開発こうのまあこう結構早い段階でまあこう社内に対してのこう開発をもっとこうなんだコントロールをしてこう作っていくんだっていうフェーズになった時にまあしっかりこう入るようになったんですけどまあその時にまあ思ったのはまあ,ある意味こう「ファイナルファンタジー」の「セブン」とか「シックス」みたいなあの当時のこう私がこう中学生高校生だった頃の「ファイナルファンタジー」っていうのはやっぱり私がこのゲームクリエイターになるあのきっかけを与えてくれた作品だったのでまあそういう意味でまあそこを。こう20年ぐらい「ファイナルファンタジー」っていうフランチャイズで私はこうやっぱり成長させてもらったしそこに対してやっぱりゲームクリエイターとしての,あの経験を積ませてもらったのでまあそこをなんか恩返しする時が来たのかなっていうのはこう素直に思いました。So,、um, at the start of、um, when they were first beginning to discuss the、um, remake project,、um, I, I wasn't yet involved、um, with it then. And once、uh, you know, we started discussing and it was determined that this was going to be developed in office、um, you know, within Square Enix,、um, that was when I sort of、uh, entered、uh, the development. And as for me, you know,、um, playing Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VI,、um, those titles in middle school and high school,、um, I would say,、uh, you know, these games were exactly sort of led to the reasons why I became a game creator myself. And they were, you know, immensely inspirational and, and influential to me as a creator.、Um, and so, as a sort of, you know, Final Fantasy franchise, I believe it really helped me, you know, grow、um, not only as a person, but as a game developer. Um, as well. So I think I felt at the time、um, when, you know, sort of、uh, going into the remake project that this was sort of my time to give back、uh, to the series that really、um, helped grow me and develop who I was. So being such a fan of Final Fantasy VII growing up and now literally making it, is, do you think that that is a, a benefit or a hurdle because you care so much and you know what matters to, what matters to get rights? そうですね、あのご自身があの FF7 その当時のファンでプレイヤーであったっていうことはその今回そのリメイク作をあの再構成するにあたってあのなんというかメリットであると感じておりますかそれともあの妨げやあのそれでデメリットになったような感じはあったのでしょうかあのー、まあ双方の面はあると思うんですけど、まあ、今回こう開発が、あのーまあ、北瀬の村みたいなこう原作のこう当時をクリエイションしてた、まあ、あのクリエイターも。こういてくれてあのからこそ逆にこう私みたいなこうファンの目線のこうクリエイターがいるがゆえにこう双,双方でこう行き過ぎないというかどっちの視点ではなくてやっぱりこう原作のクリエイターから見た時にこうすごくこうアクセルを踏んでこうドラスティックに変更したい部分もあればやっぱり私みたいなこう原作をすごいリスペクトしてるからこそどうしてもやっぱここは守りたいみたいなところとかがすごくいいバランスでこう開発ができたのでそういう意味では
双方がいたことですごくバランスがよくこうクリエイティブできていい作品に仕上がったなっていうのはやっぱり今改めて思うとあのすごく感じています。So, of course, you know,、um, with this, there can be both benefits and, and hurdles.、Um, uh, being a player and fan of the original Final Fantasy VII, but being able to sort of develop、um, this, this title and the remake series、um, with、uh, the original sort of creators of FF7 present, like Hitase san,、um, Nomura san,、um, and also having people like me、um, who were fans and players of the game at the time, I think we were able to establish this really great balance between the two. Of、um, you know, perhaps、uh, you know, those creators kind of looking back into the original and seeing areas in which we could、uh, you know, enact greater change. And, and then parts where I felt that you know, we should preserve and sort of respect and honor that、um, original title as well. So, in that sense, I think creatively we were able to establish this really great balance、um, between all of us.、Um, and、uh, yes, that was so. Do you have some examples of, of some big things and then maybe some small things from the original that you were like, we, th this is what Final Fantasy VII is. We need to make sure that we get these right. そうですね、そういった点で、あの特に浜口さんがその原作から今回、リメイクシリーズを作るにあたって、まあ、あの大きな点からこういったようなあのあのもう少しその詳細なディテールの部分まで、やっぱりその原作は、あのこうであったから保つ,保つべきといったような大きな点、小さ,い小さな点といったのは、どのようなものがあるのでしょうか。とそれはなんかいくつか例,例を挙げてほしいという感じですかね。Like examples of, of these things? <笑>はい。あのやっぱり一番あの、まあ、リメイクの時、まあ、リバースともになんですけどやっぱり原作の,あの FF7 ってやっぱりこう表現的にはすごくこうなんだろうなこうディテールがまだこうしっかり表現されてないんである意味こうユーザー同じようなこう現象があったとしてもあの演出があったとしてもそれが結構ユーザーによって解釈の仕方が結構ユーザーのこう想像で。こう分かれてしまうというか補っているみたいなところがこうあったので逆に今回こうまあ我々がこう再創作する上ではなんかそういったこう当時では表現できなかった部分っていうのをまずしっかりとあの我々のこうクリエイター側の解釈であのもっとこう世界観とかこうそこを詰めてまず表現するっていうことがあの非常にこの作品においては重要だというのをまず考えていました。So,、um, something I felt that was very important for us to do and take on for this remake series is that, you know, for the original,、um, the way that it was, you know, it developed and with the sort of techno technological、um, sort of features at the time,、um, there were aspects, certain aspects where the details weren't, you know, depicted fully. And so, you know, these are areas where players really sort of filled in the gaps with their own imagination. And,、um, you know, of course, that sort of contributed、uh, to it. To the gameplay as well.、Um, but this time,、um, now that we are able to fully express these details,、um, I believe that、uh, something that we could do now and that I really wanted to work on was、uh, being able to fully express the original creator's sort of intense and、uh, like our interpretations of how this scene、um, would play out in sort of its full details and full glory、um, was something I, I worked on. でまあ、例を挙げると、まあ、本当にこういろんなこうゲーム通して全編いろんなところをこだわってこうディテールを増して作り込んでるんで本当に上げ始めるといくらでも上げれるんですけど、まあ、あの一番最初にこうしばらくゲーム、あのーまあ、序盤をプレイしているところでユーザーに結構注目して見てもらいたいのはあのルーファウスの社長式典のところとかはやっぱり原作だと、あのーまあ、そのパレードに入ってこうクラウドがこう。まあ、ボタンのタイミングゲームをするみたいな演出のこうゲームになってるんですけどあそこをよりまちゃんとこうシンラっていう大きい組織のもう社長が就任するパレードっていうところでも,うもっと大々的なこうパレードにしつつそこに対してこうゲ,ーあのゲームデザイン自体もあのただこう入ってこうタイミングをするだけではなくて自分で隊列を作ってそこに対してミニあのゲームのこう遊びとか方向性も変わるみたいなそういう。こう演出に合わせてさらにゲームデザインもこうよりこう今に合わせてこう作り変えてるみたいなところはまあ,ああいった志でこうゲーム通していろいろ各所各所こう作り込んでるんでまあそこは最初のポイントとしてぜひ見ていただきたいなと思います。So, in particular,、um, you know, an area uh, that I'm, I find like, you know, particularly impressionable、um, that We were able to kind of hone in on、um, to kind of show all of the details from the original now in the remake series. Is、um, in that sort of first part,、uh, we have the inauguration of Rufus Shinra. 
And in the original, you know, you may recall that there was sort of that, you know, timing based mini game um, that one would uh, do with pressing the buttons. Um, but now, you know, seeing that this is this sort of major moment where, um, you know, Shinra, this major corporation uh, that really matters in the story um, is now having this, you know, large parade um, for this new president. Um, I felt that, you know, we were able to sort of now express this um, in and sort of modernize the game design um, as well. And so um, in, in, in that way, um, I believe we were able to, you know, sort of show, show this and sort of reconstruct um, this moment. So sort of all throughout the game, um, that's just kind of one example that I, I would really like people to notice. Um, but all throughout the game, um, there's sort of moments like that. So you were just talking about the some of the mini games. There are so many mini games in this uh, in the full game that are so fleshed out, and the the world itself. This is a big game. This is a very, very, very big game. <laughs> How was the turnaround so fast from remake coming out in 2020 to this coming out in the beginning of 2024, being as feature packed as it is? そうですね。あの、まさにそのあの、シャッター通りそのミニゲームやサイドコンテンツがものすごい豊富な作品、あの、だというこう、あの、開発の早い段階、もう そうですね、1年ぐらいの段階でゲーム全体のボリューム量とかイメージ感っていうのが So, um, you know, uh, I believe that, you know, we really owe this to being able to really hone in and, um, you know, determine the sort of minigame contents um, uh, sort of early on. So kind of within the first year of uh, development, um, we kind of went into discussions and, you know, more or less figured out the sort of overall like minigame contents and also the numbers um, of minigames that we were looking to develop. Um, already within the first year. Um, and from then, of course, you know, kind of honing in on, um, you know, kind of how it ties into the storyline and its further details um, were sort of uh, worked on for each team that handled those mini games. Um, but in terms of the sort of overall volume, like what we were trying to accomplish here with the mini games, um, these were really sorted, you know, honed in and sort of sorted out um, within the sort of early stages of the development. Um, so I think um, by being able to, you know, work in that way, I believe we were able to provide something really, you know, full and, you know, and uh, dense um, content wise in such a short um, amount of time. And so I really owe it to our team effort and I'm very much grateful for that. Uh, so uh, it was explained that like all these games have their own subtitles like Remake and Rebirth. What does Rebirth mean to you for this game? で、あの、過去そのリメイクシリーズにおいて、あの、サブタイトルがついていますが、あの、キーワードとして入っているので、ま、そこ自体はやっぱこのゲームをこう通してプレイしてくださったユーザーが、あ、そういうことだったのかって思っていただけるものにはなっているかなと思います。so um, precisely, you know, the sort of the side, uh, the subtitle of Rebirth really ties into sort of the core elements of the title this time. And I think I really can't, you know, divulge the details <laughs> at this point. Um, but uh, it's something that really is, is a very um, core uh, key word and a you know, key term that really ties into the main storyline. Um, so that's something I really hope for people to experience and see for themselves what rebirth means. 
Did you know the title of Rebirth when you were doing remake? And do you know the title of the third one yet? Remake was created in the title of Rebirth. そしてすでに三部作のサブタイトルというのは決まっているのでしょうか、うん、あのこのタイトルの、あのー、こうサブタイトルはあのクリエイティブディレクターがの野村の方がこう決めるこう役割になっていてあのリバースが決まったのもリバースの開発の途中1年2年1年2年ぐらいこう経ったぐらいにこれでいきたいっていう相談を、あのー、もらいました。なのでもしかしたら三作目のキーワードはもう彼の頭の中にはだんだんあるのかもしれないけどまだ私はあの怖くて聞いてないです。So actually the subtitle for the series、um, was thought of by、uh, Nomura-san, the creative director of the series. And I think for Rebirth,、um, this came up around like maybe the first or second year of development、um, from him that he'd like to use Rebirth. Um, so, as for the third title, like subtitle, maybe it's in his head already.、Um, we don't know. And,、uh, you know, I haven't asked yet. <laughs>、uh, so, there, there's Remake, there's Rebirth, there's whatever the third is. But last year, we also got Final Fantasy or Crisis Core,、uh, Final Fantasy VII Reunion.、Uh, I'm a big Zach fan, so I was really excited about that. Titling that Reunion, was that to tie it to this? Iteration of the franchise and to separate it from the compilation of Final Fantasy VII from before? Yes, so this is the second one. The remake, and the reverse, the Crisis Core reunion, and the Zach is a big fan. The reunion is the subtitle of the remake series. The remake series is the one that is the one. まあ、あの直接的になんかそのこのリメイクシリーズとつながってますっていうことをこう表しているわけではないんですけどまあ当然あのまあ近いタイトルに出ますしあのよりあれをプレイしてもらうことであのよりこのまあリメイクリバース含めてあの話をより深くあの知ってもらえるっていう形では同じようなフォーマットに合わせているっていうのはあ,のあります。Um, so while our intention wasn't to kind of create a direct correlation,、um, And sort of ties into the remake series、uh, with the reunion、um, subtitle.、Um, uh, you know, our belief is that it does, the story is very close and、um, you know, sort of aligned、um, with elements of, of the remake rebirth, and that if one were to play it, they would have a much more deeper understanding of the worldview, stories, and characters.、Um, so, in that way,、um, you know, that was why the title was made in, in such a way. And then、uh, Final Fantasy VII Advent Children is、uh, being released and re released in theaters in Japan, coming to America for the first time. We're seeing it tonight.、Yep. Really excited <laughs> about this.、Uh, it, that obviously is intentional, but how intentional is it? Mata, Adobent Children, Mo, and Nihon de Osai, so Ste, and Cochiramica de Mo, and Konya, and Joe Kaini, Tokachimo. 予定ですがあの今回またアドベントチルドレンをあの、まあ、上映するといったのも意図的なのでしょうかそ,うです、ね、そこはもうまさにあの、まあ、何かこうそこに対してお話がこう直接的につながってるってわけではないんですけど、まあ、当然やっぱりあのそこを知ってもらうことでより今作をあの深くこうディテールを知ってもらえるっていうところがある,あるのと、まあ、多くのファンがあのやっぱりこ,うこれからこうリバースが出るのに対して「ファイナルファンタジー7」としてのフランチャイズの盛り上がりをみんなが楽しむ。こう期間だと思うので、まあ、そういう意味では多くの人たちにそういうコンテンツをこう一緒にこう楽しんでもらうってことがあの非常にこう盛り上がる皆さんが楽しい雰囲気になれるんじゃないかなっていうあの思惑あります。Um, so, kind of like,、uh, you know, similarly,、uh, Advent Children, well, we're not kind of,、uh, you know, Creating some direct tie to the story itself、um, by,、uh, of course, watching the movie.、Um, you know, one will be able to really understand, have this much deeper understanding of the details、um, uh, through the film as well. And I think generally, you know,、um, we were kind of thinking of this being a time、uh, for sort of all of the Final Fantasy VII series and its sort of related contents to be celebrated、um, and、uh, among the fans,、um, both old and new. And so I think this was a really, you know, great opportunity for us to kind of bring this back. Uh, what's your favorite piece of the Final Fantasy VII compilation? Like, not, not including Rebirth, because that would be unfair, but like, what, like between like Advent Children, Crisis Core, and all that, what, what influenced you and what do you like best? そうですね、FF7 コンピレーションタイトルシリーズの中からリバースを除いた上で、まあ、アドベント・チルドレン・クライシス・コアなどの中からあの特にお好きなあの作品またあの影響を受けたような作品というのはあるのでしょう
、例えば一番あのー。まあ、でもやっぱりあの今作のっていう意味で言うとやっぱ CC はやっぱり一番こうかぶる部分もあるのであのフラッシュスコアはあのよくこう開発のスタッフにもあのここはもう一回復習しとけみたいな話はあの確かにありました。In terms of sort of influence,、um, I would say, you know, Crisis Core is a title where there are some sort of overlapping narratives、um, for, for this、uh, current title as well. And so that was something that、um, from the other、uh, dev team members too, we were all saying, okay, like, you know, let's kind of let's all replay this so that we're familiar with the storyline. のあのストーリーの中にそのキャラクターが出てくると、まあ、キリエとかも含めてそうなんですけどその辺が急にこう知らないキャラクターの背景があったりとかする場合もあるんでちょっと小説も読み返したりとかあのなんか抜けてるこう作品がないかみたいなのはあの確かに開発全体で気を使ってたりはします。And definitely、um, seeing that we have、uh, characters like Kyrie,、um, you know, coming from sort of Nojima san's、uh, you know, side stories as well,、um, we really took care as the dev team in a whole to kind of like look over his, his、uh, stories as well to make sure you know, none of those details are lost and we can kind of familiarize ourselves with all of the characters in the FF7 world. So, with, with Zach from Crisis Core being on the key art, he's on the box. What was kind of the decision making with the way the remake ended, introducing、uh, Zach to、uh, new players that were playing remake for the first time, not having any idea who he was, and then old players being like, oh my God.、Uh, <laughs> how much responsibility did you, you feel towards that character to lead to the decision to like prominently feature him this much? なので、あの今回そのリバースにおいて、あのまあカバーアートにすでにそのザックスが。あのえー登場しておりあのリメイクの,あのエンディングの方でもあのザックスが登場しているというあの驚きの,あの展開になっていますがもちろんその新規プレイヤーにとってはあのまあご存じないキャラクターであってもその、えー、そのあのクライシスコアをプレイしている方々や原作をプレイしている方々にはハッとなるようなキャラであると思いますがあの今回そ,のそ,ういったそういったようなそのザックスにおいての,あのまあ扱い方というのはにおいてどのような考えがあったのでしょうか。そうですまあ、あの確かに原作の FF7 ってあのザックス自体は非常に重要なキャラではあったけどそこまで彼自体の背景とかをこう表現はしてなかったんですけど、まあ、その後コンピレーションの作品でやっぱ彼の背景とかをあの非常にこう体験できるゲームが出たことでやっぱ非常に多くの,あのユーザーからこう愛されるキャラクターになっているっていうところもあったので、まあ、今作はその彼をこうよりこう表現しつつこう今作のストーリーにも組み込みつつまあ、彼を通してあの、まあ、いろんな今考察がされてると思うんですよこうフィーラーが出てきてこう運命が変わるのかとかいろんなこうレイヤーのこう世界線のストーリーがあるのかみたいなことをいろんなものをこうユーザーがこうこう考察していることをこうザックスを通してこ,うこの作品のなんかこう真実というか成り立ちみたいなところをこうしっかりと伝える役割としてあの登場させることでよ,よりザックスをこうのファンでいてくれてるこうユーザーにより新しい彼の魅力っていうのを伝えれるんじゃないかなっていう狙いがあります。Um, himself is sort of、uh, going. The original Final Fantasy VII really doesn't go into so much detail、um, in his character. And really,、um, it, uh, his character was、uh, you know, portrayed much in, like, deeper and in, in greater detail in the compilation titles. So, you know, fans that played Crisis Core、um, really grew to love Zack as a character.、Um, and so. Uh, you know, we felt that this was sort of an opportunity for us to kind of further you know, go into sort of depicting、um, him and his character、uh, for this title as well. And of course, you know, I'm sure that there's、uh, a ton of speculation、uh, surrounding this character now with you know, the whispers coming out, you know, people wondering, like, are there multiple timelines、uh, to this planet that's going on?、Um, so you know, those are sort of the you know, interesting parts to it、um, as well. And、uh, I really felt that、uh, through sort of Zach,、um, I really, we really want to convey sort of Zach's truth、um, uh, through his character. And、uh, we, so I felt that this was a really great way for us to、um, kind of show sort of a new、uh, aspect to,、um, to his character that will be very much appealing to his fans. 
kind of the, the opposite question, but Sephiroth is also on, also on the key art, and he is probably the character who has the most changes in their motivations and thought, like actions throughout the series. Why did you feel like there was a lot of pressure for trying to live up to fan expectations of like 20 years of who they thought this character was as you're writing new or doing new things with them? あの、なんというか、像というかそのイメージをまた新たにあの提供するといったことではどういったようなあの考えがあったのでしょうか。あの、ここは確かに原作に比べて表現のセフィロスの表現の仕方っていうのは、あの意図的にこう変えてる部分があって、
今作のリバースっていうのはあの、まあ、ファイナルファンタジー7もそうですけど FF7 ファイナルファンタジーのフランチャイズとしてもそうなんですけどあの、まあ、ファイナルファンタジーってやっぱりこうストーリーとか世界観を楽しみたいっていうユーザー多いと思うんですけどそこに対してストーリー体験だけではなくてこうよりこう自由度の高いというかゲームどの何をプレイするかっていうのをユーザーが選択できるようなこう。まあ、探索要素みたいなものをよりこう「ファイナルファンタジー」のフランチャイズにこう入れることであのより新しいゲーム体験ができるんではないかなっていうものをあの考えていたのでそういう意味ではあのストーリー世界観はもちろん重要だけど大切にしながらゲーム体験っていうところも今回新たな挑戦をしているっていう意味ではあの双方が非常に重要で非常にいいバランスの作品に。なったと思ってるんで、まあ、そういう意味で今回今作のリバースっていうのがこう、まあ、もう本当に間もなくこう世の中に発表されますけど、まあ、そこがあの皆さんにどういうふうにこう感じていただいてどういうふうに新しい「ファイナルファンタジー」のフランチャイズのこう可能性っていうのを感じてもらえるのかっていうのはあの非常にあの楽しみです。So,、um, I believe, you know, in terms of the sort of Final Fantasy VII series in itself, I think there's a ton of people who just really enjoy the sort of worldview、um, of it.、Um, so, of course, you know, we want to kind of keep that intact of, of what is really beloved、um, with the series. And on top of that, you know, I believe that by adding this sort of element of, you know, exploration,、um, sort of expanded exploration, and the sort of new, you know, degree of freedom of choice of the players to kind of choose their own journey in what way they want to play the game. Um, really brings about this sort of new、um, game experience now with Rebirth. And so, of course, so, you know, keeping this very you know, like rich、uh, you know, sort of cinematic story,、um, like, like making that important, but also kind of adding this sort of new game experience, this element,、um, uh, I think we were able to really achieve this great balance that makes this a very much like solid title.、Um, so, in that way, you know, now with.、Uh, Rebirth、uh, being released to the world very soon.、Um, I'm really excited to see you know, how players will kind of take this、um, now and、uh, if they're able to kind of see this as this,、uh, the sort of new、uh, opportunities and new possibilities that sort of the Final Fantasy、um, VII and, and sort of the series can go. This episode is brought to you by Avatar Braving the Elements. We know you love talking about all things TV, film, and pop culture with us, so there's another podcast that we think you're going to enjoy. It's called Avatar Braving the Elements, and it's Nickelodeon's official companion podcast to Avatar The Last Airbender. Y'all already know Barrett loves Avatar. He thinks it's one of the best coming of age heroes' journeys out there that perfectly blends enticing action, great comedy, and social commentary that's all backed by great art style and an iconic soundtrack. Each week, host Janet Varney, the voice of Korra, and Dante Bosco, the voice of Zuko, rewatch every episode of The Last Airbender. They're joined by special guests like the cast, super fans, and even the creators of Avatar, Michael DiMartino and Brian Konitzko, for a deep dive and behind the scenes look. Into the Avatar verse, you can't get anywhere else. Whether you're a long time vendor or new to the series, jump into the epic world of Avatar with Avatar Braving the Elements. Listen to Avatar Braving the Elements on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Y'all need to check out Kind of Funny Game Showdown, our weekly video game trivia game show. You can watch live on YouTube or on Twitch every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. But now, thanks to popular demand, Kind of Funny Game Showdown is available on podcast services. Whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere else, please subscribe and rate the show five stars. It really helps us get Kind of Funny out there. And we couldn't thank you enough. We aim to make this a video only show. So many of the games we best enjoyed watching on YouTube. But despite that, Enough of you guys asked for audio versions, so we're making that happen, anyways. Of course, that also means if you have the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon, you will now also get the audio version of the show ad free. No matter how you're watching or listening to Kind of Funny Game Showdown, thank you. And if you haven't checked it out yet, there is no better time than now. We're already many episodes into the show, so you can catch up now on YouTube or the brand new podcast version of the show. If you love what we do, please get the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or on YouTube to get the show ad free. If you just want to support us for free, please subscribe and rate Kind of Funny Game Showdown on your favorite podcast service now. Talking about that freedom of choice a bit, I think something that's very important to Final Fantasy VII fans is the character relationships and the dynamics between them.、Uh, do you feel that there is like a, a canon pairing between Zach, Cloud, Tifa, Aerith, or is that more the freedom of the players' hearts that they get to decide and who is in your heart? 
、えー、とこのプレイヤーの自由といったような点ですがあの特にあのキャラクターの絆やキャラクターの関係性というのをこの作中であの描いているかと思いますがあの特にあのそうです、ね、あのクリエイター側からの,あのザックス、クラウド、ティファ、エアリスでの,、うん、あの特に、まあ、なんというか意図的なペアリングといったようなカップリングというのはあ,、うん、あるのでしょうかそれとも、うん、あのそれはそのプレイヤーの自由でそういったようなあの自由あのな、えーまあ、カップリングというのを提供したいと考えているんでしょうか。また浜口さんご自身の中での、うん、あのどういったようなお気持ちでしょうか。<笑><笑>あのー、カップリングっていうのはそのあれなのかな。そのキャラクターのこう組み合わせに対してこうなんかどうストーリーがという話なのかな。ちょっとどうどういう。I guess um in sort of the the pairing. Uh, is this sort of more like story related or kind of more, you know, like battle or the, the, the <laughs> canon, I guess, the story <laughs> of it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Story <laughs> techni. <laughs> hmm. さっきのちょっと質問でまだあの一部答えてなかったところがあるんですけど、あのリメイクリバースっていうところに関して言うと、あのこの物語のやっぱりこう主人公というかあの誰のストーリーかという話で言うんであれば。やっぱりクラウドのストーリーだと思ってあのゲーム設計もしています。なのであの好感度っていう仕様が今作作られているけどあくまでそこの仕様っていうのはあのクラウドと誰あのまあエイレスとかクラウドとティファっていう好感度であってあのエアリスとティファの好感度っていうものはゲームの中では表現してないのは少なくともあのリバースっていうのはクラウドをあの主体とした物語として描いてるからあのそのようなあの設計になっています。でまあ、私個人のっていうところで言うとあのー、そうですねあのー、まあどのキャラクターも本当に魅力的ではあるんですけど私は今作いろんなキャラクターとこう、まあ、デートがこうできるんですけど個人的なあのお気に入りとしては。レッド13の,あのデートが好きなのでレッド13と挙げさせてもらいます。Um, so,、uh, I think I didn't answer sort of the last part of that question that you asked previously、um, about like sort of whose story is it.、Um, but sort of,、uh, for both Remake and Rebirth,、um, we really went into it sort of considering、uh, Cloud as the main protagonist.、Um, so, sort of story wise, you know, we think of him as the, the main character. And in that way,、um, with the affinity system that is present in it as well, it's sort of、um, Cloud、uh, and the affinity with、um, him and another a party member. Um, so, you know, there isn't something like, like a Aerith Tifa affinity or, you know, kind of inter、uh, uh, party affinity.、Um, so, sort of the story and, and the mechanism was sort of developed、um, around Cloud in that way.、Um, as for sort of、uh, the pairing that I really like,、um, uh, you know, for Rebirth,、uh, you're able to go on that gold saucer date that、um, is、uh, very exciting. And、uh, while、well, you can do that with,、uh, very, with uh, various characters, Um, one that I personally really like is the date with Red 13. <laughs> so I would have to say Red 13 for me. This is kind of like an aside, but like while you were developing Rebirth,、uh, Sephiroth was put into Smash Brothers. Was there any like feedback from you about that? Did you take anything back from playing Sephiroth and Smash Brothers back to Rebirth? あのこちらそのリバースの開発中にセフィロスがスマブラのキャラとして参加したかと思いますが、うん、その,あの,その浜口さんご自身がそのセフィロスのスマブラキャラとしてプレイした上でそのリバースの開発に何というか着想を得たいというような点があったのでしょうか<笑>実はなんですけど、あのーまあ、結構あのこうスマッシュブラウザーズにそのセフィロスが出るっていうこと自体は情報として結構こう機密性が高くて実は開発のスタッフはあの我々のリバース側の開発のスタッフはもうほとんど誰も知らなくてあの通常の発表と一緒に我々もそうなんだみたいなのをあの知らされたぐらいでした。So, actually,、um, with sort of Sephiroth and Smash Brothers, it was actually extremely like, confidential that he was even going to be in it. So, none of the dev team knew, including myself. So, it was more like when the whole world knew it, that's when we knew it. Like, oh, <laughs> I had no idea.、Uh, working on the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, and now working on Final Fantasy VII trilogy, 
Uh, obviously different where uh, now you know that this is a trilogy going in where I assume 13 you didn't know. Is there anything that you're taking from that experience to this in, in the sense of it being a trilogy? あの、そうですね。前回その、え、浜口さんとかその あの、私、ま、これあの、カトシンを作るみたいな。今回こう、ま、リメイクリバースっていう開発をこう、ま、こう指揮させてもらう、こう、ポジションでこう開発をする上で、あの、非常に何だろうな、その、こういうこう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こ
ストーリーを進めていくいってこう、まあ、サイドコンテンツとかクエストをやっていくとあの原作にもあったんですけどジョニーの,あのコスタ・デルソルのこう宿がこうグレードアップしていくっていうのがあの原作でもあったんですけどそれが今作も同じような要素があの用意されています。でその中であのジョニーのこう宿にあのリメイクで集めたあの武器のシリーズが。全部こう綺麗に並ぶようなこうちょっと遊び心をしていてそこはあの前作をもし全部武器を集めてない人がいたらあの一部抜けてる武器があったりとかするのであなんかあの一作目で集めた武器があの全部並んでるなっていうのはあのちょっと喜んでもらえるかなとは思っています。Um, so, you know, currently、uh, with the sort of save data from remake, Um, players will be able to sort of gain certain summon materia、um, going into Rebirth.、Um, so there's that.、Um, but there's sort of actually also sort of elements that are not so much involved in, you know, sort of the, the storyline or sort of gameplay itself, but、um, it's sort of almost like a little Easter egg in a, in a sense.、Um, with the original, I think there was a scene where, you know,、uh, Johnny is in Costa del Sol and he's running this, this hotel.、Um, and then,、uh, you know, it, it sort of、uh, keeps getting better and better. Uh, it's sort of like leveling up in a sense. And、uh, we did kind of put in this sort of、um, you know, mechanism where in Remake,、um, depending on sort of the amount of weapons that you're able to collect,、um, going into Rebirth, you're able to see all those, those weapons like in, <laughs>、um, uh, in the hotel. And、uh, so if, if you didn't collect all of them, like some will be missing and <laughs> there'll be sort of like gaps and stuff.、Um, so that was a little fun thing that, that we've done. Now that Rebirth is out, are there any like older games that you're just kind of looking at and you're thinking, like, yeah, I could probably, I, I, I'd want to reimagine that game too? あのそうリバースの,あの、えーまあ、リリースマジカとなっていますがあの他の作品で、うん、あこのリメイクもしたら面白いんじゃないかといったようなものもあったりするのでしょうか、うんえっと、それは私,の私が関わってたタイトルとかも関係なく世の中にあるもの Is this for titles Hamaguchi san has、uh, been involved with? Any, any game. Any like, game. if you wanted to like, look at like, Mario Brothers, you were like, <laughs> I could reimagine Mario Brothers interestingly. What do you mean? I don't know. 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 He's saying, hmm, great question. I've never <laughs> thought about this before. But, you know, kind of turning it around, do you have any you know, games that you would like to see we made? A very easy answer is Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> <laughs> I know、uh, Kitase san has already shut that down a little bit, but. So, this is what I always say. But, I think. <laughs> yes, we definitely get FF6 a lot from, our, <laughs> from the players, but it'll be a challenging development、mm. for sure. <laughs> What about Final Fantasy X? FF10 is a good game. It's 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 a good game. Yeah, that's a great title as well.、Um, <laughs> if I wasn't、uh, you know, involved in the development, if I'm not the one making it, I would love to play that. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that, like now that we're here, are you going to be able to play games? なるのでしょうかああ結構やっぱりこう開発が忙しかったんで当然あのいろんなゲームこう買ってこう序盤ちょっとやってみたいなのはあの必ずするんですけどなかなかこうしっかりやり込むっていう時間がこうなかったので結構「スパイダーマン2」とかも途中になっちゃってるし「あのバルダーズゲート」とかも,あのもう全然あの最初の最初ぐらいでこう止まってたりとかするんで、まあ、その辺ちょっと進めたいし「あのアラン・ウェイク」と「2」とかも全然プレイできてなかったんでちょっとそのあたりあの最後の方忙しくて。はい、手があんまり出せなかったタイトルはあのやろうと思ってたというかあの今回この、まあ、サンフランシスコに来る前のフライトのギリギリまで家でちょっと<笑>バルダーズゲートをプレイしてあもうそろそろやっぱもうそろそろ家出ないと飛行フライトに間に合わないと思いながらあの急いで家を出ました。<笑> 
Yeah, definitely. You know, towards the sort of later end of development, things got real busy. So, um, you know, there's a ton of titles that I really want to catch up on. Um, you know, Spider-Man 2, Baldur's Gate. I really was only able to play like the first uh, little bit for myself. So I want to get into it. Alan Wake 2. Um, actually, like right before my flight coming to San Francisco, I was at home playing Baldur's Gate until the really the very last moment. And I would look at the time and be like, oh, shoot, I'm, I'm going to miss my flight. And I was <laughs> playing it to the last minute. <laughs> Uh, are you watching anything, movies or TV? Yeah, I, I do watch movies uh, pretty often. Awesome. Was there anything like any game or movie that inspired you while you were developing Rebirth? あの、あの、原作の今の時代のあの、こう、難しいこう、なんかこう、人種の問題をよりこう、一つのこう、なんだろう、こう、デフォルメしたキャラクターたちが、こう、表現、あの、こう、語ってる内容は結構、あの、今の世の中に合ってる
あの僕はそのそうです、ね、前回の,そのプレビューイベントに行った時に本当にとてつもないあのエネルギーを感じたというかそのボイスキャストの皆さんもそのファンの方々メディアの方々が私有している中で本当に皆さんエキサイトしているあのとすごくあのそういったようなパワフルなエナジーが感じられましたあのそういったところにあの、えーそうですね、浜口さんが、ね、あのどういったような感情があったのでしょうか。やっぱり、そのまあ、やっぱり今作、非常に自信を持ってこう世に送り出せる作品になっているので、まあ、そういう意味でそこに対して多くの人たちのこう、まあ、熱量とか触ってもらった時のその、まあ、満足感をこう見ると、まあ、非常にうだろうな、まあ、嬉しいというよりかはあの、まあ、達成感というかこうあまあこう作ってきてよかったって思うのと合わせて。まあ、やっぱ次回作も含めてやっぱしっかりこの3部作っていうのをなんかちゃんとしたものにしないといけないなっていうそういった責任を感じはしますね。Yeah, definitely, you know, kind of seeing something that, you know, I personally feel very confident about, you know, putting into the world,、uh, but also kind of seeing this immense sort of passion,、uh, you know, excitement,、uh, sort of happiness, satisfaction、um, from the players.、Um, of course, it, it, it kind of gives me this feeling of like, you know, accomplishment and happiness.、Um, like, you know, I'm really glad that I made this game. At the same time, also the sense of like uh, uh, immense responsibility going into the third title to kind of be able to answer that same feeling for the fans. Too. Imran, do you have any final question here? What's your favorite mini game of all the ones in Rebirth? Reverse no Naka no Kini Rina mini game or Tono game this cup? The Commodore Mo, it's even the Okini Ritu, the Queen's Brother, which is one Kini Rina, and the other, ma, also docks now, the Choto Iko, the Keko, Henka Q, the Kiniko, the Kiniko, the Kiniko, the Kiniko, the Kiniko, the Kiniko, the 開発トゥエルブもあのファイナルファンタジー12もこう開発してたんですけど今回1個ミニゲームでちょっと面白いこうミニゲームを入れていてあのー、ガンビットギアーズってこう呼ばれてるちょっとごめんなさい英語名だともしかしたら違うかもしれないですけどあのまあファイナルファンタジーのガンビットからこうまあ着想を得てこうロボットに対して AI をこう組み込んでそれに対してこうまあ自発的にこう行動してくれるのでそこに対してこうストラテジー的なあのーこうミニゲームをするっていうのが、あのー、コスモエリアに用意設置してるんですけど比較的あれはあのー、企画から、あのー、調整が結構私が結構深く関わってるのであれは、まあ、一部の、あのー、こうそういうものが好きなあのユーザーには多分すごく刺さるミニゲームになってるんじゃないかなと思ってちょっとユーザーの反応が楽しみではあります。So, you know, my favorite is Queen's Blood,、mm -hmm. uh, but that's a pretty standard <laughs> answer. So, just to kind of throw in a little curveball here,、um, I was also、uh, in, involved in the development for Final Fantasy XII, and、um, some may remember the game、um, Gambit.、Uh, but so for Rebirth,、um, there's a mini game called Gambit Gears, and it's a mini, mini game, it's a strategic mini game involving a sort of robot. Um, that takes place in the Cosmo area.、Um, but this was a mini game that I was really heavily involved in、um, from its sort of initial planning、um, to sort of、uh, you know, really further developing it. And I think for certain users, this will be、uh, really exciting and fun to play.、Um, so I'm, I'm pretty、uh, looking forward to seeing the reactions of the fans. Uh, the final question I have for you is a couple weeks ago in an interview, you said that this is the most confident you've ever been in a game. Why is that? 最後の質問です,あのそうです、ね、数週間前の,あのインタビュー記事であの今まで開発してきた中での作品でも最もその自信を持って世に送り出せると考えているゲームですとおっしゃっていますがそれはどうしてでしょうか、うん、あの結構「ファイナルファンタジー」のこうフランチャイズってこう一作世に出すとその次のとこタイトルっていうのはまたこう新しくこう、まあ、バトルシステムからこう。あいろんなものが、まあ、新しく再構築するっていうのが、まあ、ある意味でこう「ファイナルファンタジー」フランチャイズの魅力ではあるんですけど逆に言うとその一作を出してそこに対してお客さんの反応だったり自分のこう手応えっていうのをこう次の作品にこうそのまま生かすっていうのがなかなかこうやりにくいこうタイトルの性質があ,のありました。だけど今作っていうのはやっぱりこうリメイクをこう制作してこう世に出して、まあ、その時のまあユーザーの反応、まああのさらにそこに対して作ってる中で自分の中でこう感じていたものみたいなものを今回はそこを
こういろんなこう改善を含めてあのより新しいアプローチを含めてリバースっていうものがこうやっぱりリメイクがあったがゆえにリバースっていうものが今回できているのでそういう意味で今回あの非常に納得のいくクオリティまでこう引き上げれたっていうところがあるので、まあ、この作品っていうのが本当にお客さん,お客さんからこうどういうふうにこう評価されるのかっていうのは本当にもう今ワクワクしております。So I think, you know, usually with sort of the standard Final Fantasy、um, mainline series,、um, you know, when it's sort of released into the world, since they're sort of standalone titles on its own,、um, uh, uh, of course, you know, each title may go into, you know, creating a sort of new battle system or sort of enacting some changes within the title that makes it unique. And that's part of its appeal、um, as, its, as its own FF title. But I think it,、um, in some ways,、uh, Sort of developing、uh, you know, single titles in that way, it, it can be challenging to sort of get feedback from, from the users and you know, kind, of,、um, you know, kind of sort of develop from there. But in Remake and in, in creating this sort of trilogy,、um, we're able to you know, kind of release Remake into the world and see the sort of responses from the users,、um, kind of see how it sort of everything plays out. And,、uh, and we're now able to kind of You know, return、uh, with Rebirth, being able to sort of include and sort of reflect on these,、uh, you know, feedback from the users,、um, kind of include the, some elements that we may have wanted to include initially that we're now including in Rebirth, and sort of generally sort of, you know, make these uh, uh, sort of improvements and adjustments to it.、Um, so, in that way, sort of Rebirth,、um, you know, really ex exists only because of Remake. Um, and so I feel sort of this you know, utmost confidence in being able to create and deliver something of this like, high caliber and quality, you know, having gone through those processes. So I'm truly excited to see how it'll play out. That's awesome. Is there any, any final thing you want to say? Hamaguchi san, the last one, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, そうですねあのーまあ、本当にもうあとこう発売も直前に、あのー、なっておりますけど。あのやっぱ今作は本当にもう今日いろいろあのお話しさせてもらったんですけど非常に納得のいくあのところまでこう作り込んでいる状態であのお客さんの,あのに届けることがあのできている作品になっていると思いますのであのぜひ多くの人に触っていただきたいですのであのぜひぜひよろしくお願いいたします。So, we're very soon、uh, close to launching this、uh, you know, long awaited title. And I do believe that you know, it's become a title、uh, that's you know, going to be immensely satisfying and just you know, truly fun to play.、Um, so, I'm excited to see、um, how people will receive it and would like as many people to play it、um, as we can. So,、uh, I hope you will all enjoy. Well, there you go. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in stores February 29th. You can check that out. Of course, we'll have our review up. We're going to have a whole bunch of stuff up.、Uh, and by the way, Snowbike Mike is about to beat、uh, Remake for the first time. He's been doing his journey over on Twitch and YouTube, so you can check all of that out. It's been such a fun ride. Imran, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And of course, thank you one more time. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your passion in making this game and everything. Thank you. Goodbye.